Literary Translation Part 2 The Sound Devices One of the distinctive features of literary translation is musicality. Sound devices are used to make the content easy to recite, memorize, and talk. The translator should pay attention to the function of these features in either language to see whether to retain such devices like alliteration, assonance, rhyme in the target text or not. Sometimes the purpose is achieved by using normal words or by a clever choice of words that contain alliteration, assonance or rhyme. Alliteration, assonance, and rhyme, and also onomatopoeia, are devices that help us make phrases, as in headlines and slogans, eye-catching and easy to remember. This makes such phrases or sentences perceivable even by the non-native speakers of the target language. Alliteration and assonance Alliteration is the use of the same consonant at the beginning of each stressed syllable. The same definition applies to assonance with a little change. That in assonance, we only consider the repetition of vowels. This is a phonological device employed to enhance memorability and quotability. Alliteration is also commonly used in book titles to make them more eye-catching and appealing to the ear. Look at this book title, Fire and Fury. The author skillfully used alliteration for the same reason we have just mentioned. However, the translated version overlooked this important feature. Although it's hard to find a similar form for this phrase in Arabic, but we can still think of another sound device that is more commonly used in Arabic in general, that's rhyme. Here we can translate it as Al-Lahab wal ghadab However, sound features are very hard to maintain without any kind of loss. For instance, Kathy Reichs employed the sound devices and played skillfully with the words in her selected title of the novel, Monday Morning. The word morning is an expression of sorrow for one's death. It both describes the horrific incidents of discovering remains of three young women in the early hours of Monday. It's very hard to find a similar word in Arabic that can give the same phonetic function for mourning, an expression of sorrow, and mourning. Therefore, the translator used a metaphor instead, al-ithnayn al-aswad, using the color black that's closely related to mourning. In literary translation, translators should do their best to retain the sounds of the source language and reproduce the same effects in the target language while maintaining the original meaning. Now we can move to onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a type of word that sounds like the object it describes. For example, the word bang that covers the sound produced through explosion or firing. Although onomatopoeic words imitate the sounds of nature, we might find the sound differs from one language to another. 
with onomatopoeic words which do not have equivalent in the target language the translator can give the meaning stripped of any sound consideration let's have a look at the following passage from al kharats novel Turabuha Zafaran look at the underlined words Tatarajraj Washwasha Tatarakrak Zaklaka the underlined words are translated as rippling hiss chatter we can notice how smooth and pleasing to the ear the underlined Arabic words and their English equivalents but this doesn't work all the time rhyme rhyme people are more inclined to remember phrases that rhyme than unrhymed phrases as in aphorisms and proverbs human brains remember rhyme alliteration assonance and other devices the ease of pronouncing the phrase influences how long that phrase will last in people's mind so this is an effective device it literally works especially poetry for instance the following lines by Tago the winner of Nobel Prize in Literature for 1913 may be easy to understand and rendered into Arabic but the word choice and the use of comparable figures of speech that could be as appealing to the target readers could differ from one person to another I traveled miles for many a year spent riches and lands afar I've gone to see the mountains the oceans I've been to view but I haven't seen with these eyes what two steps from my home lies on a sheave of paddy grains a glistening drop of dew these few lines are translated differently by me and by Rahma Abdurrahim أمضيت سنينا مرتحلا وأنفقت من المال جزلا عاينت جبالا وجبالا ورأيت من البحر الجالا وعميت عن سحر حولي بهاء جلاه ندى السنبلي This is not as elegant as the version translated by Rahma Abdurrahim who is more interested in translating poetry قطعت سنينا دروب السفر قضيت بعيدا فصول العمر ففيها مضيت لأرقى جبالا وفيها مرارا عبرت البحر وقلبت ترفي ليهنا مليا وعما جواري عميت النظر وأهملت قربي حقول جمال بها قد تندى لذيذ الثمر You can notice that one of the common features in the above translated poems is the use of rhyme which could seemingly be considered the most characteristic aspect of Arabic poetry apart from poetry this device may seem very irritating if it is overused however giving more intention to phonic features may distract the translator from intrinsic properties of the text like denotation and connotation this passage from Abdurrahman Maniv's novel Al-Ajjar Uqtiyal Marzouq employs rhyme in some words in the English version the translator maintained rhyme in the same passage but with different items in the context of an English novel rhyme would seem highly inappropriate and 
probably comic. So attempting to produce an equivalent English text with similar rhymes will seem apt to the target language audience. Thank you.